I'm here today to show you a really fun tutorial on creating a cute little woodland scene. We're gonna be painting some mushrooms and ferns and this little cute doorway that a fairy could live inside. <laughs> if you've ever followed any of my tutorials, you know I really love whimsical things and I typically work in this super layered style, but today we are going to be using light watercolor along with pen and ink to create a really beautiful forest scene. So let's get started. For this tutorial, you're gonna need a couple supplies. The first one is watercolor paper. Please make sure that it is watercolor paper because we need it to be able to handle the water. I'm using Stonehenge, but you don't need something that fancy. Canson or Strathmore or something that you get at a local craft store is totally fine. I, I have a ruler just so I can find the center of this because I want it to be balanced, but you don't have to do that. Um, I have two water cups for our watercolor. I have the Pigeon Letter size 4 brush. I also have a smaller details brush. And I'm also using the Monoline pen from the Pigeon Letters. This pen is important because it's waterproof and we're going to be painting over it. However, if you don't have a waterproof pen, you're going to switch the order of things. So you're going to paint and then you're going to use the pen. But we are going to use the pen first today since this is waterproof. And then of course, some watercolor paints. So let's get started with our drawing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna find the center of this just so I can make sure it's nice and balanced. Don't worry about your pencil lines. We are going to end up erasing them, but just make sure that you don't draw super, super heavy because when you erase watercolor paper, you're actually, you can pull up some of the texture and we don't wanna do that. So I'm finding the center line here. This is seven inches, so it's gonna be about, uh, th or it is three and a half. And I'm just making a really light line. And I also am going to do one this way as well. So 10 and this is five. Perfect. What we're drawing today, if you guys remember from the photo I showed, is a tree, a bottom of a tree trunk with some mushrooms and a little door. So the first thing we're gonna start with is that tree trunk. And I'm just drawing a line that is slightly curved and it's going to come down just past the center mark here. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side, trying to make it as even as possible. And for the door, I'm just going to exactly in the middle here Actually, I'm not going to do it in the middle. I'm going to do it slightly off to the side. The reason I wanna do it off to the side is that sometimes when you, you draw or paint something and it's just totally straight on, it doesn't look as interesting. So that's why I'm making the door slightly off to the side. So I'm just doing a curved arch here. Then I'm gonna do another curved arch that, that hits up at the top of that arch. This is just a shadow line and it's showing that if you cut a hole through the wood, this would be the thickness of the tree, technically. This is also um, kind of like fairy tale, so we don't have to have it be perfect. Then I'm just making this little skinny rectangle here. It's like a little table and I'm gonna put a teapot on top of this. So a circle for the teapot and then another little circle with a spout coming up a handle, maybe like a little triangle for the top. And there we go. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually just going to be painting that black. Then we want to draw in our mushrooms. The first mushroom I'm gonna make, kind of, if you guys are familiar with the porcini mushroom, that's what it's gonna look like. And we have to think that this is a tiny little door because fairy would live in it. So the mushrooms are actually going to appear to be quite big, to, maybe to us, but to the perspective of how small this door is, their average size. So I'm making a half circle here, a little dome shape, and then just coming down with the stem of the mushroom. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here this one might be slightly bigger. And then I'm going to make a mushroom that has a 
that's more wide. If you guys are familiar with those ones that are red with the white dots on them, super poisonous. <laughs> but they're like thinner like this, kind of a saucer. And make the little stem. And then we're not gonna worry too much about this area because we're gonna put in some moss, but I do wanna add in maybe like some ferns. We don't have to get super detailed, but we do want to have the general layout because once we do this all in pencil, we're gonna go in with a pen and then with the watercolor. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with fern leaves, but they're kind of like this. And it can pass over this little door a little bit. And let's do another one kind of coming over here like this. I don't want this to go, actually it can go to, all the way to the edges, I guess. And it can kind of like cross over the door there. And wrap around the mushroom a little bit. And then we can put like little grass growing. Um, let's see, we need something else. I'm gonna do another one of those fern leaves up here. Just drawing all these leaves. And to keep it interesting, alternating how they are going, like maybe one's a little bit more wide, not just perfectly up. Then I'm going to do a few berries, maybe some little leaves coming out. And we don't need to worry about this space down here. Just make some little berries with some leaves and you don't want to do them all like threes either like two you want to alternate it a little bit otherwise it looks too perfect okay so i'm happy with the way that our sketch looks and now we're going to come in with our pen again this is a waterproof pen. So if your water, if your pen is not waterproof, you'll need to paint first and then sketch uh, with the ink. So I love these model line pens by the Pigeon Letters, and I'm just going to start um, adding in. I'm gonna do like the general outlines and adding in any details I want with the pen. So I'm gonna do this big tree trunk in the back first. But when I do it, I'm going to make sure that this line, I don't go over my leaves. I go under them so that it looks like the leaves are on top. So something smart is probably to outline your fern first. And also, don't worry about, oh no, I, I didn't add enough details in the pen phase. That's totally fine you can add it in after you do the watercolor and the watercolor dries because that's the cool thing about these pens is they're waterproof and then they'll totally write over paint watercolor paint all right so we have this little fern piece and then i'm going to paint my mutt or draw my mushroom and i'm going to make a little just crack here a couple little cracks just to make it look more realistic because in nature it wouldn't be super smooth. Same thing with the, the stem, maybe making it a little wobbly. I'm going to do the door here. I really enjoy doing these whimsical pieces, especially with watercolor and ink because to me it feels a little more forgiving. 
because you have the option to add in details and you don't have to draw every detail in because you can do that later with the ink. Because like I said in the introduction, I usually work in a layered style, so I use tons and tons of layers. My paintings take hours and hours. But this style, I can do something a little quicker and I really like the look of it. I've been exploring this style a lot recently. Gonna do our little tray here. And then we don't wanna do this line because the mushroom is coming over. That is also an important thing when you're drawing to think of overlapping things because it'll make things more interesting. And then just outlining this little teapot. The fairy drinks tea. Maybe decaf. I feel like a caffeinated fairy would be would be trouble. <laughs> We're doing the same thing here, making kind of that jagged edge. Then we have more of these ferns. And if it helps you, you can make this the middle line first. Just little grass here. Then we have this very disc shaped mushroom, making it a little jaggedy. Some grass down here. And outlining our berries. Make sure you're getting like little details that you might have missed. doesn't have to be perfect drawing we're just outlining it maybe one of the berries is in front of the other one that would make sense you would see that more in nature than them just being perfectly set out by each other and some of these leaves are overlapping Maybe I'm gonna make some berries back here and a leaf going over it. Okay, so this looks good and we're just gonna let our pen dry really quick. This pen dries super fast because I wanna come in here and erase the pencil marks because with watercolor, if you don't erase the pencil marks, you'll paint over the watercolor and if it's really light, it'll show through and we don't want that. So I'm gonna go and grab an eraser. Okay, now I'm just gonna erase. I like to use a gum eraser because a gum eraser doesn't tear up your paper if you just press it down like this to pull up the pencil marks. So I'm just gonna speed this up while I erase this real quick. All right, something I realized when I was erasing is that I totally forgot to continue this trunk line <laughs> all the way down. Just going to go ahead and do that. And then this is very bare, but after we add some color, we can come in and add more detail there. So just make sure that all your pencil lines have been pulled up, or most of them. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now we are going to get to the super fun part, and that's adding color. So I actually realized that, um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna stick with this brush. I could do a little larger brush, but I'm just gonna make it work because I don't wanna go back upstairs again. <laughs> okay, so I'm mixing up a tree brown color. Choose any color you want, but I'm gonna choose one that's I'm using um, like a kind of reddish brown. And I'm just going to lightly paint this. Remember, we don't have to, we're not worrying about tons of layers today. We're just adding in a little color with our inking. So we don't have to get too crazy. But of course, if you want to get crazy, knock yourself out. Um, I'm just doing something that's a little more simpler for today's art tutorial. 
and you can come over here too. Technically the wood inside of this, if you ever cut a piece of wood open, it's lighter than the wood on the outside. So um, I can, I'm gonna decide later, but if I was just spending all the time in the world on this, I would definitely make this darker than that. I'm actually gonna try to add a little more darkness. So you're just painting around all of your leaves here. Kind of has a cartoonish feel to it. Maybe I'm just going to add in a little darker tone. Make sure you get all those little spots because that's what's gonna matter to make it look interesting and realistic. Looks like I have something on my paintbrush. I don't know what that is, but. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I think I might have pulled up some texture on this. This feels like the perfect tutorial for autumn time. Okay. So we have that down and I think it would look really cute to make this yellow, like a light is on inside. So I'm gonna grab a yellowish kind of golden tone and I'm going to just paint that in here. And I'm just using pretty sap, um, water, like a pretty heavy wash almost, not super, super satur saturated paint. There we go. Then I'm going to, you know, I want this mushroom to have white dots on it. So I'm going to draw those white dots with my pen before I paint it because I want to paint around all these little dots. This is the quintessential mushroom that I remember drawing when I was in middle school. <laughs> I was born in 1985, so that, or you might already know by me saying that. <laughs> but this is what was really popular for us. I'm going to grab red now and just paint around. I also like using this method for the, um, the watercolor because it's really easy. A lot of people, um, they want to use watercolor, but they maybe don't want to learn all of the techniques. And this is, this feels just this, like the simplest form of painting. You're just putting water and paint on your brush. I will give you a little tip. Your brush should not be dripping with the water and paint. That means you have way too much water on your brush. If you just tap it on a paper towel, you can get rid of some of that. But you can totally play with the amount of paint that you put on your brush. There's no real hard and fast rules here. It's not like we're only using wet on wet or wet on dry. I, I mean, technically, I guess we're just using wet on dry, but we're also like in some of these spots we're popping in darker colors. Now for our little berries, those are also going to be red, maybe a little darker shade of red. And when you do these, maybe leave a spot that's white and make that spot different on all of them. And some you don't have to do at all, but it just gives it a little, a little whimsy. I would love to know where you're watching from today. If you wanna add that to the comment section. It's so cool to see that sometimes people are watching from across the world because I'm in America and 
sometimes there's people from India or Germany or Brazil watching and it's just so cool. Okay, so we have our little berries and now these mushrooms, I wanna paint those and I wanna make them more golden in tone. So I'm grabbing yellow ochre and just making it a really light wash. Now, if you're, if this is really soaking wet, then you might want to wait a little bit because they will bleed into each other. I'm okay with a little bleed because this is a little more loose style that you don't have to worry too much about. And if you want, you can grab more saturated color, maybe with a little darker brown and just pop it in in a corner so decide where you want your light source to come in so if the light source is coming from this side we would make the darker shadows over here i'm going to wait to paint these because they're not quite dry yet we can paint the bottom of this one so maybe i'm thinking a little bit of a grayish brown color very very light if you want to lighten your color, just add a lot of water to it. You can always tap your brush on a paper towel to get some of that water off. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. So on the left hand side is where my shadow would be. I'm rinsing off my brush and grabbing just water and blending it over. And I'm not going to do the same color for these and I think they're okay now because I'm not using a ton of water on here, so the, this is drying pretty fast. Also, it's about 85 degrees in my house because although this will launch in October, it is summertime right now. And actually, that little bleed kind of looks cool. So I'm gonna try to do that over here too. So just dotting in a little bit of color. So this is the wet on wet technique and letting it bleed down. I might do that here too, just because technically there would be a little shadow here. How's this? Oh, that's pretty dry. I'm going to paint these a gray tone because what I want it to look like is that you're looking in to this little fairy cave and you're seeing a glow, but everything else would be in shadow. So that's why I'm making it this color. My dad used to work on this lady's house. He's a painting contractor. And she had little mouse holes like this in her house with a little door. And it was so cute. I guess she, her nickname was Matt Mouse or something. So she had it. It was so cute. Oh my gosh, adorable. Okay, now I'm mixing up some green. And we want the green, the fern green is going to be a little more yellow. So we want this to look more um, like mistletoe-y. I guess mistletoe is the name. And we're just gonna paint these darker green. Now we're gonna alternate this darker green. So some of them we're gonna add more water, some of them we're gonna add less because we don't want it to be boring. Or we might add a little more like yellow green to some. I just come in here and add the color. Some can be really light. And I'm actually gonna let this bleed a little bit because, because we have these lines, it's already going to draw the eye to, oh, there's a leaf there. And I wanna actually kind of blend this in so we get the background here. Kind of looks like moss in a way. And we can always come back in and add a darker shade. But for right now, I really wanna make it look like this is on the floor. And as you can see, the red is bleeding a bit because it's still wet. I'm okay with that, but if that bothers you, just make sure, oops, I actually didn't want to paint those yet. 
So if that happens, just rinse off your brush, then dry your brush off on paper towels and then just pull up the color. Just paint behind these guys. Make sure you pay attention because sometimes these can be really hard to paint behind. It's like an optical illusion. Okay. So we have that. And if you just dra drag water across the bottom here, it'll s make your edge a little smoother. Now let's paint these guys. And we said we wanted to do a more yellow green. So just mix up a yellow green. Usually I have sap green and then I add a significant amount of yellow. Maybe just a little emerald. My yellow is always such a mess because I never rinse my brush off before I go in. <laughs> I'm grabbing a smaller brush now, a size one for these. And we're going to be using the same technique where some of them are going to be more saturated, maybe a little darker, and some of them are going to be um, lighter or a little more green. When we went to Scotland, I remember the ferns were everywhere because we did a 100-mile backpacking trip. And, I mean, it rains all the time in Scotland, so the ferns were so happy and they were, like I said, they were everywhere. Really, really pretty plants. I have struggled to keep my ferns alive here in California because it's hot. <laughs> But I found a space where they're more shaded and they seem to be a little more happy. Like I said before, there's kind of, we're just painting. It's kind of therapeutic because you're just filling in the shapes, right? You almost essentially made your own coloring book and now you're just filling in the colors for it. And I'm going over the lines a little bit. That's okay. <laughs> We're not striving for perfection here. Also, probably drank a little too much coffee today, so I'm having a hard time keeping my hand totally straight. <laughs> but it's okay if it goes a little bit off. But it is meditative because you're just filling in these shapes that you already drew, and you're not wor worrying about layering or making um like perfect wet on wet technique or anything like that now i definitely think the leaves on our berries need a little zhuzh they need to be jazzed up a bit we are going to do that as soon as this dries Oops, oh wait, that is the right one. We can actually test it out. It might be dry enough. Let's see, it's pretty wet still, but let's just see what happens. It seems to be holding on to it enough. So we can add color so these guys, just make sure to alternate. You can also leave some of that lighter color too. That's pretty wet over there, but.
Okay. That's looking good. Something I think I want to do with this tree is I want to put in some dark, you know how there's kind of those veins or cracks in a tree? I want to add some of that here. I'm going to mix up a darker brown. Actually, I think this is burnt umber. And I'm just going to kind of put in some of those cracks. And I will come back in here with my pen and outline these a little bit. But I just need something. That looks too plain. Oops. And you can always just grab water and kind of blend it in if you need to do that. And maybe adding a little darker yellow on the inside here. And then I want to put some lines and maybe, actually, I want to put a little more uh, color on these guys. So grabbing a brown that's just slightly different, and I'm going to make some little spots. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of water, just water on my brush, and just lightly blend it in. So almost looks like dirt spots. Have you guys, you know, I don't know if you like to eat mushrooms, but I love mushrooms, like edible ones that you eat like food, not like shrooms. <laughs> and uh, they're always a little bit dirty. So this is kind of what I'm making there is just making little dirt spots on the mushrooms. My husband hates them. I've tried to sneak them into so many different food items and he always knows. Just a little, I'm just like tapping, kind of scrubbing, like scrubbing motion a little bit. And then I'm gonna put some lines down here in the trunk of this mushroom or stem. Just really light. I'm just doing this motion. All oh, like barely touching almost. And I want to put in a little shadow, so I'm going to grab kind of a grayish color and just the tiniest line right here on both sides, especially if there's a little crack there. Rinsing off my brush and then just lightly scrubbing so that it blends in. I have a little bit of water on my brush. That looks good this guy get a little gray and do the same real light lines okay now I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna come in one last final time and add in some pen marks all right we're almost there this is completely dry if you want to stop right here you totally can but I want to add in just a little more details because I'm just an extra person. That's how I am. <laughs> okay, so the veins in this tree, I want to outline just one edge. And I'm just outlining it with this pen, which is so awesome because you can just draw right over it. And technically, there would be just like a little triangle here where it comes and touches this section where it kind of like cracks. Um, you don't have to add that, but I think it's a nice little way to add some texture there. And then maybe just putting a little extra edge, outlining it just a little bit more. Our cute little teapot here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the lines in these mushrooms. I'm just really lightly drawing some lines, maybe adding a little like out just a second line 
that's heavier. So it looks like a shadow. Maybe just adding a little more thickness to some of these lines. That's another way that you can so show shadows is adding thickness to lines. And I think I actually might add a little darker red over here because it's looking a little flat. Another thing that you can do is hash marks. So I'm just lightly making some hash marks under here so it'll look shadowed. You can also grab a thinner pen, which this is a size three, but I would probably do a size one. And then anywhere where you feel like it needs some texture. So maybe some little spiky, um, not spiky, but like grass, little triangle, triangles here and there, maybe just some curves. So it looks like a mossy floor, give it some texture. Maybe for these leaves, you wanna add a vein down the center. And maybe you wanna add some of those hash marks into these berries, but curve them a little bit so you still get that texture. I mean, you could really knock yourself out here. <laughs> um, like never ending, you could just add more and more and more, but there is an art to knowing when to stop and when to keep going. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks really cute and whimsical. I am going to add a little brush lettering down here. I wanna call this um, fairy garden <laughs> or like fairy something. I'm gonna grab green. You don't have to do this, but I, I'm a calligrapher as well. So what you do is you wanna make your downstrokes thick and your upstrokes thin. So, Let's call this, I'm just gonna write fairy garden. You guys can write it however you want though. This is just something extra, you do not have to do this. Um, but what I do is when I make, so here I'll show you. I am. I just made my letters, so that's fairy. And I'm going to think about where my downstrokes would be. So I would have a downstroke here. So I just thicken it a bit. This would be upstroke, so it would be thinner. This would be down, so it would be thicker. Thin, thick. Oh, I'm going to call it fairy cottage. There we go. <laughs> I love all things whimsical. Sometimes our world can just seem a little overwhelming and I always love to fall back on my art and to just know that I can escape a little bit by just dreaming up these little cute lands. <laughs> I don't know, am I weird? Do you ever feel like that? Art has really been a place to go that feels really safe for me and feels like home. And that's why I love teaching so much is because art is just incredible. It, it has helped me through so many hard times in my life. And I don't know if anybody out there feels like me, but <laughs> it has really been amazing. And I just love having it because I can at the end of a hard day, or even when I have a really good day and I'm feeling good and I wanna keep feeling good, I just start painting and or drawing and I feel awesome. So <laughs> I hope you guys love this tutorial. If you followed along with me, I'd love to see your artwork. You can tag me at Lavender and C on Instagram. I always repost. Um, I, I just love seeing what you guys create. So thanks so much for following along with me and I hope you have a wonderful day.